Amid Alahopa, thank you for joining us. I am Aliyah Chavez. Across the nation, college students are raising their voices in support of Palestine, including many indigenous students. Just one example is at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, where students held a day long protest at the Student Union. Because as an indigenous woman, I identify with a lot of the issues that Palestine is facing right now. And I just wanted to show that I stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine and I believe in uh, them getting their land back. Students told ICT they see similarities in the plight of Palestinian people who consider themselves to be victims of colonization, genocide and violence that indigenous people have endured for centuries. Many protesters at UNL are demanding that the college stop investing in businesses tied to Israel. In Alaska, we're monitoring a bill passed by the state Senate that would increase support for disaster relief. If passed in the House, it would raise the maximum state relief amount from $21,000 to $50,000, giving Alaskans more substantial help during times of crisis. Alaska's unique geography exposes its residents to many natural hazards like earthquakes, wildfires, and landslides. According to bill sponsor, Senator Jesse Heal, the legislation addresses critical gaps in aid for state-only disasters. In Texas, college students say they are feeling the impact of Senate Bill 17's ban on DEI programs. ICT's Paris Wise explains what that means, and here's a UT Austin student's perspective. In Texas, Senate Bill 17 has banned diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at public colleges and universities. The law became effective January 1st of 2024 and states all hiring practices must be colorblind and sex neutral. However, this has not only caused job loss, but has left diverse student groups on their own, including the Native American and Indigenous Collective at UT Austin. Co-director Raven Price-Smith tells ICT how this has affected their group. We were under the Multicultural Engagement Center which uh, basically advised us. We had actual employees advising our student org and helping us with our events and members and everything. And even with preparing for SB 17, you know, the center, they changed their image, but on January 1st, they closed the center down completely. And so we lost our funding from that. And we also lost our advisors. And so basically coming into the semester, all of our officers and me, we basically were trying to work to have our org survive this huge change. Despite this hurting students' mental health, they are taking back their power by having a powwow on their own terms. Um, actually, last year we had it on campus and you know, they weren't trying to work with us at all. They were putting a lot of rules like no vendors at all and that we couldn't invite the public even though it was sponsored by a department. And there was just a lot of rules and obviously like they weren't trying to work with us for our powwow last year, but we still had a really good powwow and a lot of guests. And then this year we decided to move it off campus so that they can't push all those rules and it was a lot bigger and it was really good. We just wanted to have this powwow and just show our culture and not try to hide any part of ourselves because of this bill. The lack of support from the university has only brought in more support from their communities. And now they have a message of their own to other groups facing these challenges. I would just say to keep pushing and just keep doing whatever your org is doing. Don't let the university try to diminish whatever you're working on. Paris Wise, ICT News.